Today we're going to be working on some problems to do with measurement and composite figures. Now if you're the kind of person who really likes to just get stuck into the mathematics right away, then feel free to use the time codes in the description or the chapters and skip along to where we begin actually having a look at the problems. But for everyone else, I'm actually going to give a little bit of a preamble, a prologue to what these questions are, where they came from, and also some of the thinking behind it because you might be interested in some of that, especially if you're a mathematics teacher and I know there's a bunch of you out there who are watching. So, for starters, where did these questions come from? Well, I actually created these questions myself many years ago. Uh, this says 2009 here, so more than 10, more than a decade ago uh, at a previous school. And the reason why I created this uh, worksheet, as it were, is because often teachers will rely on you know things they find on the internet or textbooks but it's often the case that we won't find exactly the questions that we're after or we'll find like one nice question here and another one there but not in the same place and one of the most important things that all teachers do is we change the way that we teach in response to what exactly our students need so I put together this sheet for the purpose of a particular class that I was teaching can't remember even what grade it was that's how long ago that I taught this particular um, um, I created this particular worksheet and taught that particular class. One of the things that is tricky though is that years and years ago I made this worksheet available on my website um, so that other teachers and students could grab a hold of it. Uh, but one of the tricky things that happens is that you know, when I use this worksheet in my class, I don't just uh, hand the worksheet out and just say, okay, off you go. Uh, I actually interact with my students. I have a plan for how I will use this worksheet and, and sort of question and prompt and um, support my students to work through these questions. And often, um, I will actually have a plan in my mind for a particular question and how it's designed to, to prompt conversation or discussion or questioning. And that's the case with some of these questions. And so if you just, picked up this worksheet, you just downloaded it off my website and I'll put the link down below so you can get hold of it and print it if you want. Um, as you were looking through it, you might have gotten a little bit confused at some of the questions because my explanation in the classroom uh, wasn't part of the worksheet experience. So for most of these questions, what you'll find is they're, they're fairly straightforward. And what I've done is I've already uh, you know, written up some answers here that I will very briefly walk through and explain each of the, the thinking behind it. But then there are a couple of questions kind of scattered throughout this uh, worksheet and its design that actually raise a few more questions. And they were intended in my class to make students think a little bit. Um, they're what we call a non-routine problem. It raises uh, challenges that it's not quite obvious what to do with them. There's not just a straightforward formula or algorithm. You actually have to do a slightly bit of creative problem solving as you're going about it. So we'll encounter those questions as we go. There are six questions on this sheet uh, and they're all about uh, area and perimeter for composite figures. And as I so helpfully wrote more than 10 years ago, composite figures are composed, that's the uh, composite part um, of the basic figures. So, you know, triangles, circles, squares, rectangles, and all the rest. So that's why you can see where these come from. Um, they aren't too complex in terms of the different um, designs behind them, but what we're gonna do is have a look at um, each one in turn and I'll, I'll work you through the solutions and the thinking behind them, okay? Now it is important to recognize why do we care about this at all? Uh, one of the best examples that I can find of composite figures in reality is just the world that we live in. This, for example, is a satellite uh, photograph of my school. And if you just have a quick look here, right? Even though most of the buildings, these are the original buildings over here, they're just square. So it's not too difficult to work out what, say, for example, the area of the roof is. Um, there's a new block over here. It only opened uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and it's a weird looking shape over there. It's not a rectangle or a uh, parallelogram. Or it's just composed of many different pieces together. So if, for example, you wanted to know the area of that roof, which would be important to know how many materials you need and all the rest, you're gonna to have to treat that as a composite figure. And in fact, there are other composite figures tucked away in here. If you look closely here, see if I can outline it for you. Um, this is the playground that I, I'm now going to uh, try and draw for you. Let's choose a nice bright color like this. So here, huh, why am I dotted? I don't need to be dotted. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Um, here is the outline of the playground and a grassed area. And you might be wondering, why is this so curvy? Well, actually, it is called, that area is called the Serpentine Wall, and it's actually a, an Australian First Nations symbol. A snake is a really big part. The Rainbow Serpent is a big part of their creation myth and other things as well. So you can see you've got this kind of outline here 
and this area, very roughly speaking, is all intended to be grassed. So if you were trying to work out the area of the grass, to say for example, work out how much water and fertilizer it needed, then again, guess what? composite figure. So these kinds of uh, shapes happen all the time. In fact, uh, rectangles, circles, triangles, perfect shapes happen surprisingly infrequently in nature. So composite figures are absolutely worth wrestling with and wrapping your head around. So, with no further ado, let's actually have a look at some of the questions. And as I stated before, for the questions that are pretty straightforward, we will just have a look at my, my pre-done working. I'll just highlight a few bits and pieces here and there. But then when we encounter some of the more tricky ones, we'll actually work through it bit by bit. So here is the first question. You can see I've already put a bit of working onto the diagram here. All that you get provided is the fact that this is two centimeters. You've got these lengths here that are all equal. Um, and then you've got a, a right angle here and the rest you need to infer. So you can probably tell already this is going to be a square. So it's just two by two and uh, that's where you get this area one over here. Um, and then this second area over here, you can treat it as just a separate triangle and do half base times height if you like, but half base times height comes from the fact that it, this triangle here is, com is made up of half of the area of the rectangle around it, which is this square, A1. If you were to uh, you know, draw that all the way around, if I were to do some dots over here, you can recognize that that whole outline is just the entirety of A1 and I've just sliced it in half. So that's where I got this and you can see by the way through my working, I've done all the areas in purple and all of the perimeters in orange just so it's a bit easier to distinguish. Then when you go around these same lengths that I mentioned here before, P, Q, Q, R, R, S, and S, T, all of them are two centimeters in length. So I just multiply that by four to get the eight. And then you need to use Pythagoras. I haven't stated it here, but P, T is the hypotenuse of this P, S, T triangle. So that's where Pythagoras' theorem comes in here. That's the exact length, eight plus root eight. But so that we could do a bit of a sense check, I thought it'd be helpful to just do a bit of an approximation there. And that's just to do test places. 10.83 centimeters and we're done. All right, question two here. There's a nice little archway which is composed of a semicircle across the top and then you've got this rectangle that's attached to it underneath. So again, I've just given some names here. Area one is this rectangle, area two is the semicircle. And so I've just done length times breadth over here. And then when it comes to the semicircle, I've got half times pi times the radius squared. And you just have to watch for the fact that 10 across here is the diameter. So I had to halve that to get the radius. That gives me this area once I uh, approximate out and get pi out of the way. And then when working the perimeter, uh, the really, the only tricky part here is uh, that half of the circumference. So I'm using half times pi times the diameter. That's actually the definition of pi. It's the ratio between the uh, diameter and the circumference. And I did half because it's a semicircle. After that, you can see I've got this 10 down here and the two times four comes from those two vertical edges over there and 33.71 is where I ended up. <laughs> 